Let's say that you volunteered to be part of a psychology experiment at the community college near your hometown. And they sat you down in one of the classrooms. And up at the front, they had a big card with a line on it and another card with these three lines, A, B, and C. And they asked a very straightforward question. Which of these three lines is equal in length to the line over here? So in your mind, you can hopefully visualize some lines going across and see that C is the right answer. And so you would mark down C on your piece of paper, or you would raise your hand and say C is the same length. And they're you know, logically thinking there shouldn't be any reason for you to say anything else. But what if everyone else in the room, when called on, and you were toward the end, if all of the other uh, peers in the room, or the rest of the study group, said that the answer was B. If everyone else in the room, you know, if there's, if there's 12 people in the room, and you're the 12th one to be called on, and everyone else said it was B, would you trust your own perception and say, well, no, you guys are all wrong, I think the answer's C? Or would you sort of chicken out and say, oh, maybe I, maybe I should get some glasses and that I can't see very well, and the answer actually is B. And this was the question that Solomon Ash, A-S-C-H, was trying to answer when he, he did an experiment just like this. He got 12 to 18 volunteers, sat them down in a room, and for the first few questions he had a bunch of very similar problems to this. And for the first few, the the cohorts, which is people who are in on the experiment, I should write that down, the cohorts would give the correct answer. They would be saying C in this case. And then the actual person being studied, the person who didn't know that this was all a fraud, would be, you know, they'd just go along with them. They'd say C, that's obviously right. And then after the first few, maybe two or three questions, the people who are in on the experiment would start saying the wrong answer. They would start saying A or B. And and then at that point, they would, you know, the experimenters would write down whether the the odd man out, the one who's actually being studied, would follow along with them or they wouldn't. And you know, this Professor Ash thought there's no way we can trick people into giving the wrong answer with something as simple as this. You know, people will figure out that it's an, that it's an experiment. He, that was his hypothesis going in, but it turned out to have different results. About 25% of the time, the person being studied did not conform, did not conform, conform, and that would mean that they gave the right answer, that they stood their ground. One, one out of four people stood their ground and said, basically, no, you're all wrong, and I am the only one with the perception to tell that it's C, or maybe they did figure out that it was an experiment. And 75% of the time, roughly, three out of four people conformed on at least one. And the actual statistic is 5% of those conformed every single time. So, um, you know, they were somewhere in the middle. But 75% would tell, would give the wrong answer to something as simple as this just because, you know, their peers, the people who they kind of identify with, they hadn't even met them before, but just because other people in the room were kind of exerting this peer pressure on them, they gave a completely wrong answer to a very simple question.